What's going on, everyone? I am going to show you something today that I've been talking about a little bit, and I see a lot of requests with this in the group lately. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you exactly how to create a GPT, a custom GPT. People ask, you know, what's a GPT? Really what it is is your own custom chat bot that you can talk back forth with that has knowledge built into it. So to get into here and get started, this, you know, you have to have a ChatGPT Plus account for this or you can't use it. So what we're going to do today, I'm just going to show you something very, very basic. You know, creating custom GPT, most of the time you can create stuff that's outside of the GPT where you can call like API actions and, you know, lock stuff down with paywalls, et cetera. Um, but for today, you know, the people who aren't really familiar with this, I'm going to just show you exactly how um, you can set up a pretty basic GPT. So this is your ChatGPT interface, as most of you know. And what we're going to want to do first is click Explore GPTs on the left-hand side. And then in here, you see all these GPTs, but we're not going to go after that right now. We're going to create our own. So we're going to click Create on the top right corner, the green button. And here you are. And I'm going to tell you what I'm going to create. So, you know, I'm just going to create something basic that can go along the lines with the business that I own, where it's going to be able to help me write emails to people. It's also going to, you know, write the contracts back and forth with the clients as well as you know anything else i needed to do about my business so on the left hand side this is where we actually configure the gpt on the right hand side this is where we have a preview of what we're creating so for example my company's name is viral wave studio so we're just going to put viral wave studio i'm just going to say helper right you can name it anything you want and you can use these for yourself or you can share them out to you know the public but if you're doing something like this you probably don't want to share it the description is I help create emails. What did I say? Work agreements and more. Just keep it very basic. So on the left side, we have our name, we have the description of the GPT, and then we have these instructions, conversation starters, knowledge uh, base where we can upload files as well as capabilities and actions. Um, we're not gonna get into the action stakes. I don't wanna overwhelm anyone. Um, I'm kind of making this video just for, you know, your base person who's just starting out with creating custom GPTs. And then the videos here that I'll create shortly will go more into detail about creating custom actions and writing schema and pretty much starting to write code for yourself. But with this, you know, we can keep it very, very basic. And today what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload files to the knowledge base. So to begin, you know, what I think would help in my business is if I had you know, an assistant that would be able to, like I said, write emails, as well as write out service agreements for new client, as well as, you know, write out any kind of outreach or anything like that. So usually what you would do in the instructions part is this is pretty much telling your GPT what to do, how to behave, you know, like what it says, what should I avoid doing? This is pretty much training the model without having to write code. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to say it's your job to help me write emails, work agreements, and more. I mean, and this is very, very basic. You know, you, you can have it as complex as you want or as basic as you want. But for this example, I'm just gonna show you the function of a GPT. So it's your job to help me with write emails, work agreements, and more. And then I'll just say, start the conversation by saying, hello, Mr. Porter. <laughs> okay, and then I'm gonna say, since I'm gonna upload a knowledge file, and what these are, I have three knowledge files that I'm gonna upload here. What a knowledge file is, is you know, just like it sounds, you can upload a file of knowledge. So I'm gonna upload um, an example of a work agreement that I have. I'm also going to upload, you know, my pricing points and different packages that I have for the social media automation. And I'm also going to upload, you know, a business outline kind of explaining what Viral Wave Studio is and what we do. So what I'll do real quick before I add more to the instructions, I'm going to come down to the knowledge base and I'm going to click upload files. What we're going to do here is just pick my file. So I have my business overview, comprehensive overview. I also have, let's see. And then I'm going to add the social media automation packages as well as an example work agreement. Great. So now that you see your files are uploaded, these are just text files. You know, 
you can put whatever you want in the text files. You don't even have to do this if you don't want to, as long as you explain the instructions. But I find that works out the best using it like this. So we're gonna come back up to the instructions and say, when creating content, make sure you refer to the knowledge base or the structure of how I want the content. Okay, super, super simple. And so pretty much this is this is pretty much ready to go. We have capabilities on the left hand side. And what I really did here is just made a little helper for myself that will retain information, you know, to retain my comprehensive business overview. Because sometimes when you go to ChatGPT, you know, you have to start a new conversation or the conversation that you've had, like with regular ChatGPT, it just kind of starts going sideways sometimes. So, you know, creating a custom GPT is really helpful because it always retains that information. So now what we're going to do, I'm going to bring myself over after I explain what capabilities are. Um, what capabilities are, you can uncheck or check these, and they are just what they say they are. So you can have the capability of being able to web browse on, you know, the GPT, as well as create images, and you have code interpreter, which we can go into a little later on what that's about. But I'm just going to keep those checked for now. Actually, we won't need web browsing um, since I kind of uploaded the knowledge base, and I don't really want to put any, you know, actions with web, web browsing there. And then you can get into all these things where, you know, um, you have actions, you can create new actions and you would write out schema, which is code. It's an open AI spec that you would have to write with, you know, privacy policy. We have authentication up here. You don't have to worry about this right now because we're just doing something very basic. So, okay, let's test this out. I'm going to move myself over here to the left. Um, and what we can do here on the right hand side is the preview section, right? So with the preview section, let's just start the conversation by saying, hey, okay. It says, hello, Mr. Porter. And you know, that's what I said, start the conversation with saying, hello, Mr. Porter, right? How can I assist you today? I'm gonna say, I onboarded, right? New client whose name is Joe Smith. And I need the work agreement for our base social media automation package, right? So I said, I onboarded a new client Oops. Whose name is Joe Smith. I need the work agreement for our base social media automation package. So now what it's going to do, it's going to kind of search the knowledge base. You see that says searching the knowledge base. It actually search the knowledge base and based on the standard social media automation service agreement template, I've prepared a customized work agreement for Joe Smith. So here we go. It's actually replacing, and I can show you what this work agreement looks like. Let me see. Da -da 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 -da. So we have, okay. <clears throat> so this is like what a template work agreement looks like. It has like someone's name, has my business name, blah, blah, talks about the packages. You know, they sign up for the base package. Now I want to show you, it, it took this entire, you know, service agreement that I already uploaded and just changed, you know, the customer's name to Joe Smith. It talks about how they're on the base package one social media account talks about the setup fee you know how much it costs a month and then that's it and then what you would do is you can just copy this down you know you can take it steps further where you can actually use outside actions where it will actually send this you know contract agreement to your client's email or if you write on an email for them it would actually send that email on that behalf but you know that has to do with running custom actions and putting in your custom schema so to ask another question, I'm just going to say, okay, great. Now create an email reaching out to him, Joe Smith, saying welcome to the future, right? So based on, you know, Viroboy Studio, it's going to write out an email pretty much about the onboarding process because I have the knowledge base put in here. Um, we're thrilled to welcome you aboard by our studio, your journey towards revolutionizing your brand's digital presence begins now. And we couldn't be more excited to be a part of it. It writes up, you know, everything that's on this outline that I put in here. 
if I can just stop this real quick. Um, so we have different base packages and I can kind of just show you, you know, that it knows the package pricing. What are the package prices? And this comes right back from, you know, the social media automation file right here. You can see it's searching the knowledge base. And then it's going to talk about the pricing and, and you know, what exactly they get with that pricing. So I will stop that there. You know, we don't have to keep looking at that. I'm just showing you the functions of, you know, really how well this works. Just for something very basic that takes, you know, five minutes to set up and it saves you a lot of time going back and forth with, you know, talking to ChatGPT and not having it trained. Um, then up here, I, I didn't go over this, but we can also add, uh, you know, a little logo. We can either upload a photo or use Dolly to create the image and put it as your, as your logo. And then whenever you're done with your GPT and just kind of did the basic steps like we just did, all you do is click create, and then you can publish it to the GPT store. You can have it for only me or anyone with the link. And then you just click share. I'm just going to do only me because it's just me using it. You click share and then your GPT is saved. And then we can go ahead and view the GPT. You'll see Viral Wave Studio Helper, and here we go. So if anyone has any questions, you know, this is a very baseline setup of the GPT. You can put anything you want in them. I'm gonna get into, you know, creating API actions and everything like that on another video where, you know, I'll really push the limit with GPTs. For example, I'll show you, you know, some GPTs with custom schemas real quick before I end this video. So I'm gonna go into my GPTs. I'm gonna scroll down here. I have a bunch in here, real-time finance data. So with this, you know, I'm just gonna go in here and edit the GPT. Real-time finance data, right? You know, this is kind of what I set up on the one you just watched. There's not a knowledge base because what I do here is I use actions and I wrote out all this code, you know, and GPT can help you do a lot of this kind of stuff too. But I wrote out all this schema to bring in custom actions pointing to API endpoints. And, you know, that might sound over the top for some people, but it's not, it's not very hard once you get to learn it. So with like this GPT, I have all these different functions that it can search outside of the GPT and get real time finance data. Instead of like, you know, asking GPT to search up a stock per se, you know, you're able to actually search real time data using API endpoints that are calling outside of your GPT. So just wanted to show you that, you know, we can go into that later on in another video. And I really appreciate everyone joining this group and being super engaging within the group. Um, I'm going to keep bringing these videos out for everyone to check out. And I really appreciate everyone taking the time to watch these videos and have a good one, everyone.